I mean, you mentioned remote play with the the Vita and PS4. Um, so it, I assume you watched that conference. Um, just high level. I mean, what do you think about PS4? Like, what did that communicate to you? Um, and, and is it exciting wow. to finally be able to talk about that next gen as a thing that exists? Well, one thing I think that that Vita thing demonstrates is something I've been thinking about for a while, which is the notion of being tied, your gaming experience being tied to a particular location, you know, like mm-hmm. to a particular machine, you know. And that's like, you know, one of the first great things I think, you know, when like Valve, you know, when Steam came on board, um, all of a sudden, like, your particular machine, which you had spent all this investment installing games on and save games and all that stuff, that became, that problem went away. And all of a sudden, it was like, I wasn't afraid to buy a new PC. I wasn't, I could be on the road with a, you know, with a game, with a company PC and, you know, like in England or something, I'm like, oh, I want to play XCOM and I can download it, you know, from my Steam account. And the same way, I don't want to be tied to, I, I'm not a fan of being tied to a particular piece of hardware to have an experience. And that's why I love that the Vita can become an extension of, mm-hmm. of the PS4. And I think that's really important because, you know, with other media, whether it's film or, or TV, you're not tied to a particular physical device. You know, you can sort of experience that in a broad range of devices. You know, you have a movie, especially now, you know, you watch, you want to watch a movie, it's like, oh, do I watch it on TV? Do I go to the theater? Do I watch it on Netflix? Do I watch it on my phone? You know, like, right, it's right, right. a huge range. And I think that's, you know, you know the, the interface for those are simpler, so that's easier to do. You know, a start button is, is you, know, a, a, you know, the VCR-style controls are pretty easy to put on almost anything. Um, so there are some interface challenges, but um, I think it's a good sign. I think it shows Sony understands that element of the universe, that uh, gamers want to do what the gamers want to do, and our job is to facilitate that experience like, from a physical standpoint. Like, they, like they don't necessarily want to just sit on the couch and play this. They may want right. to go somewhere else. They may want to leave the house and maybe play it. I don't know if that's the current plan, but ideally that's where eventually things go. Did you did it strike a chord with you when Sony came out and they were talking about the PlayStation Four and they say you know that it's a it's a system for game des- game developers by game developers like they you know and then they put up their little video with Tim Schafer and all these all other the sexy pebbles guys. and polygons <laughs> well yeah that they were talking that, like, basically you know that they were listening and it's going to be this kind of like PC interface rather than this complicated cell thing right. did that get you get you excited I mean with the possibility of what that system can do yeah look look I think the cell thing was a an interesting experiment and it. it it, 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 from a practical level, it, it, it added some challenge um, because you know it, it's not that it's not not a reflection on the quality of the cell. It, it's just that more, it's a different style of, of, of game development in terms of from a technical standpoint. Um, and so, it, so you sort of were developing for very for platforms that were quite different in a lot of ways when you're developing for um, Xbox and, and PC and, and PS3, and that added. Um, development time, and if, mm-hmm. it, you know, if they were all cell, you know, the approach that would have been a different thing because then you still you'd have one form of development, but you really had two different, very very radically different kinds of, of development um, forms you had to take on, and that added some complication. Um, and so I'm pleased personally as a developer to see that we're getting back to sort of a single approach uh, because again, I'm not a I, I think gamers, you know, want to play the game, and it's about, you know, what is the software you have on it? What are the features you have on it? That, what are those things like? You know, hey, stream to your Vita. Um, you know, like the, um, you know, have you know, how they're thinking about being able to have a separate processor to go, you know, for uploading videos and stuff like that. Um, if I recall, if I, 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 I've been on press stuff, so I've, I've had a, a minimal interaction with the, the conference in terms of all the details. Of sure. It. Um, and um, but I think that's a very positive direction and shows a lot of maturity on, on, on Sony's part that you know that they've been, uh, they've heard they've listened to the developers and are going to um, going to be taking that approach. Do you feel like you know based on that share button, based on the idea that people are going to be able to play a game and upload you know a clip of whatever they want to Facebook and I think it's what Facebook and Ustream and whatever else? Yeah, is it a little weird you know coming from the perspective of like you know and, and especially for Bioshock, you guys have like kind of been putting out footage and you can really think about what people see and what's out there and then now suddenly people can you know do whatever weird put and upload it themselves. Like, is it a little weird kind of having that control in the gamer's hands? No, oh, I mean, look, we put the thing out there, right? And then it's, then it belongs to, you know, once they, 
well, and I'm not saying this from a legal perspective, like you know, an IP perspective. Like, Please don't don't have some I hope some lawyer didn't call me and say you well, you you just said that everybody owns <laughs> extra Bioshock. extra um, Ken Levine says <laughs> Ken Levine says, but but in terms of from a creative standpoint, you know, you put work out there, and at that point, it becomes it stands on its own as it is, and if somebody does something or mods something or changes something or makes a video or cuts something together, that's their expression of it, and it's not my expression of it. But that's fine. I'm like I'm what that doesn't impact my you know my team's initial artistic expression i look i get excited when i see fan art when i see cosplay i mean you know you guys know that about me i mean i hired a cosplayer to be the face of the game you know um and that's um i think that's great i think that's a it's a sign of um of maturity when you have an audience that cares enough to really sort of put their own mark on things well, Ken, final question before we let you go. What's Troy Baker like like in real life? He's dreamy. Users lose all sense of reality and enter another world. Remember, do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. PlayStation.